with that kid. Hello, Marty. As the saying goes, it's that time of month, eh, fatso? Big Daddy sent us for this month's interest payments. Now pay up. Uh, I'll get the money soon. Uh, honest, uh, look, business has been picking up since we started the big Golden Age of Wet T-shirt contest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's had surgery. Well, I've seen all the tits I need to see. Come on, son, let's go. Daddy's gonna kiss Workman's comp on the ass now so they don't cut off my check. When I give the signal, you run in screaming about how you're starving and how you want Daddy to make it all better. Hide your smokes when you come in. Percy was trying to screw the government again, and Kevin was supposed to be helping him. But he became fascinated with the squeegee kid he could see working down the street. The kid had more piercings than Kevin had ever seen before, and he wondered if it made him cool and if people liked him more because of it. Thanks for coming, Mr. Spencer. I have a few questions about an irregularity in your claim. You briefly worked for, let's see, Jimmy's probably stolen goods. He needed me to move some dead stuff out of the basement. Yeah, and it was during this time that you claim you were injured on the job? Well, what was the nature of this industrial accident? He kicked me in the back when I told him I banged his sister again. Now my back's crippled and the government said, you gotta pay me. Mr. Spencer, the seriousness of your injury is in doubt. We had you followed by an investigator, and he provided us with, well, this video of your recent visit to the beer store. God, mister, that's like ten two-fours. You can make two trips, you know. What? So you can rip me off while I'm in the parking lot? Fuck that. Mm. Watch where you're going with the fucking floor polisher, you stupid old... Oh! God, son of a whore, fuck! Oh! Your back seemed healthy enough there, Mr. Spencer. I was on pain medication, so I didn't know what I was doing. Your claim says nothing about pain prescriptions. I ain't never said it was prescription. I'm sorry, Mr. Spencer, but we're cutting off your workman's compensation. Listen, you effing prick. By the time I leave here, one of us is going to be getting workman's comp. Don't let it be you. Don't make me call security. Better give the kid the signal. You'll turn on the water worse than snow that brick. Percy knew he couldn't win this round, so he told the auditor to kiss his fat white ass and went outside fixing to tear Kevin a new one. Yeah, <laughs> as if. Hey dude, looking for work? Cause if you are, this is the place to do it. Get off the street, you little bastard! I love the freedom, being your own boss. Yep, this is a life for me. Get a job, you little prick. Maybe a desk job is for other people, but not me. Kevin said he thought jobs were for assholes and asked the kid about his piercing, especially the nose ring, which Kevin thought was pretty sweet. Actually, this is a hood ornament. Had a bit of an accident on the job last week, but hey, the risks come with the job. You just have to be careful around traffic, or else... Die! Kid, I just met you a few minutes ago, but still, you're my oldest friend. I want you to have a squeegee. Kevin figured he'd take the squeegee and carry on the tradition of his friend. Then Kevin decided to carry out one of his old man's traditions and took all of the kid's valuables. Kevin liked the idea of being a squeegee kid because the punk seemed to meet a lot of people every day and eventually, maybe some of them would like him.
Tell your friend you'll talk to him later. We got a score to settle. Why'd you take off and leave me hanging? Now I got no more work than comp. Kevin told the old man to stick it. Since he still had plenty of other gullible government agencies, he was defrauding. Bullshit. All I've got left is welfare, UI, veterans, pension, and the government arts grant. And they're gonna wise up sometime. Except maybe the arts grant. I gotta figure out my next financial move. As it turned out, Percy's next financial move involved wrapping a chain around the bank machine kiosk at the mall and tearing off in a stolen car and dragging it behind him. Then he went on a bender with the money and decided to get some ladies. Remember, officer, for this sting operation to work, you've got to be a totally believable prostitute. As it is, it took us two hours to make you look like a woman. I am a woman. I know. You think that would have made it easier. Oh, uh, <clears throat> here comes a possible perp. Good luck, officer. Would you like to molest my person in exchange for monetary favors? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. But I'll give you 20 bucks for a hand job in the car. Geez, you sure got a lot of wire on your tit. Are you a robot? He did what? He put it where? How long? Jeez, your father got busted again. I gotta figure out how to get some money into this house. Kevin told his mother that he would be bringing some money into the house now that he had a lucrative new job at the squeegee kid. Thank God, for a minute there, I thought I might have to get off the couch. Get mama gin and vodka, will ya? It's nearly three o'clock, and if I don't get started now, I won't be drunk enough to have my afternoon nap. The next day, Kevin got started on the busiest corner in town. Get off the street, you little bastard. <clears throat> no, thank you. Get lost, you social leech. Eventually, Kevin found a motorist who was very interested in him. You know, vagrancy is illegal in this province, don't you, kid? Kevin told the cop that what he was doing wasn't vagrancy because he was earning the money through a solid work ethic and stringent self-discipline. Resisting arrest too, huh? I'll teach you little terraces to spoil our city. Get your hands on the car. Oh, but first, <clears throat> finish that spot I parked under a tree this morning and the birds really unloaded on it. He did what? You stuck him where? Well, that's just fucking great. What do you have, Annie? Spot me a few shooters, will ya? I'm a little short on cash on account of my provider ain't been around to steal us a living. I can't afford to front you any more drinks, Anastasia. What? Well, you better think about what you just said, because I sure ain't been smoking your pole for your looks. But... Uh... Hey, nobody cuts off Anastasia Spencer. I can't help it, baby. I owe some serious money to some serious people. If I don't get it to them, the bar's history, and maybe me too. Well, if my tab's cut off, then so's yours. You can play Pirate Conqueror all by yourself. Mom needed money and didn't feel like becoming a prostitute again because she was a lazy, ugly old cow who couldn't earn enough money for rent if she was turning tricks in a leper colony. And that was too bad because the only job worse than being a prostitute is telemarketing. We're a leading-edge telemarketing firm. The people you'll be phoning will be elderly pensioners who we've convinced have won a fabulous prize. Easy enough? I guess. Good. Here's your sucker list. The lettering's extra big for you slow-reading types. Good luck. Hello? Mrs. Honkula? You've won a fabulous prize. I said... You won a fabulous prize, but in order to win, you'll have to purchase a subscription to Shirt Magazine, the only magazine about shirts. What's that? How can you be a winner for a contest you never entered? Hey, I'm always doing things I don't remember. But then the pictures turn up on the internet, and I remember them again. Hello, Mrs. Newman. We're a respected marketing organization. <coughs> Excuse me, the tuna salad's been repeating all day. It says here on our computer that your husband died yesterday. Have you had time to think about how you might want to invest your life insurance claim? Oh, sure. You'd like to take a few minutes to grieve. I can wait.
Mr. Spencer, you've been charged with attempting to gain the services of a prostitute. How do you plead? That hooker was wearing a wire. Besides, how can you put me in jail if I didn't even get the first base? We aren't putting you in jail for what you were doing. We're putting you in jail for what you were thinking of doing. It's a good thing you can't tell what I'm thinking now or you'd put me in solitary. If you want to avoid solitary, Mr. Spencer, you can enroll in our new John School to help you learn why prostitution is bad and what you can do to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. Do I stay out of the joint? Yes. We simply assume the humiliation of attending this program will be a sufficient deterrent. Percy thought this was pretty sweet, mostly because public humiliation wasn't much of a deterrent to a guy who typically spends his weekends naked and drunk somewhere on city property. Look at me, I'm from the planet of the apes. Woo! <laughs> Next case, People versus Kevin Spencer. What is this, family discount days? Kevin, you've been charged with being poor and unable to support yourself. How do you plead? Kevin said he was sorry he'd done it because he'd always known jobs were for assholes and he wouldn't have done it if he'd known he was going to get caught. You have a gift with words, Mr. Spencer. Let's put it to good use. Since you might have a chance at a future, I'm recommending you for corporate labor. Line up for the warden's talk, assholes! First, the results of yesterday's urine test. To those who passed, congratulations on affording a clean sample. To those who failed, you will be punished by removal of all urine privileges. Our next order of business, we have some new inmates with us. Welcome to corporate service. Corporations hire prisons, us, to use inmates, you, as cheap labor to handle their phone traffic. Hey, Kevin. It's pretty sweet. Uh, the people who call don't know they're talking to convicts, so they tell you everything. Check this out. Yes, sir. Two tickets to a room on the 12th. I'll book that immediately. Thank you. You have a nice voice on the phone, too. I'll uh, need your credit card number to confirm. Okay, sure. We'll hang out sometime. See? Guy gave me his address, credit card, and everything. We'll, we'll see whose friend he is when my parole comes up next week. Kevin was really impressed with Petey's entrepreneurship and decided to get to work right away. Kevin liked prison because he was always learning neat new ways to make money. Percy, on the other hand, was learning a different lesson altogether. Welcome to John's school. Hello, students. Hello, Hello teacher. teacher. Prick. Now, we all know why you're here. Over the next few weeks, you're going to experience an awareness-raising exercise that will not only help you stop exploiting prostitutes, but enrich your lives as well. First, here's a video to help you understand the seriousness of your crimes. Ever since the dawn of time, prostitution has existed. Every society and civilization has struggled to eradicate it and failed. Well, this video even makes hookers boring. Hey, didn't you used to be the weatherman on TV or something? Yes, prostitution seems to be a problem that's impossible to stop. But the solution starts with you. Let's meet the real victims. I was a prostitute for 10 years. I did drugs, I was abused by my pimp, and it's all society's fucking fault, damn it! She's pretty hot. Mr. Spencer, please pay attention to the hooker. I worked my way through university as a high-paid escort. Yeah, I think I threw one into her once. That chick could tuck a bowling ball through a tuba. How do you deal with the pain? What pain? I made a shitload of money, and I didn't get forced into some asshole marriage with a jerk-off cross-dressing weatherman. <laughs> that defies, sister. So you're in denial about your pain? Don't lecture me on denial, prick. My degree was in psych. Fuck denial and fuck you. And where the fuck you get off telling me what I can do with my body anyways? As you can see, another young girl torn with inner conflict at her abused past. 
This arsehole offered me 50 bucks before he turned the cameras on. Uh, thus we see the moral decay that is overwhelming our society. Thank you. Goodbye. Hmm. I like the old video better. Can I go home now? No, no, no. We have several more hours of trust exercises. Fuck! Hey, uh, Mr. Pratt. I screwed another stupid geriatric out of a few grand on a timeshare scam in the Bikini Islands. Ah, uh, yes. Those atomic tests really made that acreage a rock-bottom value. Anastasia, you're amazing. For all your good work, I'd like you to be the presenter girl who hands our lucky winner this enormous novelty check. What? You mean somebody actually does win a fabulous prize? Eventually, we have to give someone something. It's the law. So, who's the lucky winner? I don't care. It's supposed to be random, so just pick anyone out of our sucker list. Okie dokie. You're a modern man with modern needs. You won't settle for second best in life, in art, in love. So why settle for second best in macaroni and cheese? Hello. Hey, it's Annie. Don't ask questions, just listen. You're about to be the prize winner of a huge cash award. I'd give it to Boise, but he just grew me out of it all. How do you know I won't do it? Cause if you try, I'll tell everybody why you was not allowed to be in a movie theater in Chicago no more. Kevin only had two days left to serve, and he'd gotten a lot of work done. Most of it was making a map of all the people he knew would be out of town on vacation when he got out. He figured he'd drop by their houses once he was on the outside. <laughs> Is this the number for airline reservations? Kevin told the man it was. Hey, you know, if I didn't know better, I'd say you were Kevin Spencer. You sound just like my buddy's stupid retard kid. No offense. Now, I know you couldn't be him on account of he's too stupid and screwed up to have a real job. But enough about that loser. I want to book a couple of first-class round-trip tickets to Ireland. My girlfriend Annie just threw me some big money. She's the mother of that stupid kid, Spencer, I mentioned before. <laughs> Kevin told Marty he'd booked the flight. Then he decided that the first place he'd visit when he got out of the joint would be the Camel Toe Inn, just to teach him that you shouldn't cheese off a retard. <laughs> Good afternoon, complete stranger who I've never had sex with before. It's my honor to present you with this check for $100,000 for entering our sweepstakes. Thank you, beautiful woman who I've never screwed from behind until she spoke in tongues. Can the big winner have a kiss? Why, it would be an honor. Holy shit, all this sensitivity training's really getting to me. Maybe it is wrong to get a prostitute. Maybe all them women been exploited by men too much. That's it, no more hookers. From now on, it's only phone sex for me. And if I watch the porno channels at the same time, it'll be like having a hooker. baby but for now I got a little deposit of my own I'd like to make oh wait do you think we should put the check somewhere safe yeah hi there you big strapping stud what's your name Percy and I need a woman baby Stay This is gonna be some kind of tasty fucking sweet, baby. Sweet. Yeah, I wanna stick my fucking stiff sweepstakes. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I'm not sure I have room in my pants for a check this big. Maybe I can let some of that pressure off for you, hey, baby. That fucking Marty's rich, and he's screwing with my woman. That's gonna cost him. We'd 
like to cash this check, please? I'm sorry, sir. We can't honor this. This is a forged novelty check. Forged? But that's impossible! I brought it to him myself! I'm sorry I can't help you. And now that I know you're both criminals, please leave the room or I'll flood it with nerve gas. I don't get it! What happened to the check? Saw you on TV and figured you'd be here with your big stupid check. Yet you think you got more money you can make off with my woman. Well, there's been a change of plans. Hey, Percy, ain't nothing like that. Here, she's all yours. What the whore? Just give me the check. Oh, uh, sure. Here you go. I don't uh, spend it all in one place, huh? <laughs> and no hard feelings? Of course not. You're my friggin' bartender. For a hundred grand, I'd go down on myself. Gee, Percy, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me, buddy. No, I should tell you, uh, they won't cash your check here. It's, a. Uh, too big. You'll have to go to a real bank or something. Don't worry. I got my own way of doing things. Something must have been wrong with the check. I'll see if I can get another one tomorrow. Let's stop at the bar for a drink, baby. Without anyone knowing it, Kevin had pulled a switch, making him the architect of what was literally the biggest check forgery scam in history. Cashed the bartender's airline ticket and flew off to find out if all the rumors about Amsterdam were true. Still looking for some action, big boy? Fucking right. Will you take a check? Cross his path.